Welcome. We at the Wilson Combat YouTube channel uh, hope you'll subscribe and ring the notification bell. That way you'll be the first to be notified when new episodes appear. I've been asked to talk to you today about shoulder holsters. Now it sounds like an anachronism and they do really go back a long ways. Uh, the pouch type shoulder holster was actually fairly popular on the old western frontier in the latter 19th century. It was the hallmark, of course, of the Elliott Ness, Al Capone years and the entertainment uh, media's approach to that. But in fact, they're still in use today. A, a lot of folks in the current plastic and kydex generation think a uh, shoulder holster is either a throwback or an affectation by somebody who's seen too many James Bond movies or too many Miami Vice reruns. Fact is, you might just find, as I've found over the years, that the shoulder holster, whether or not it's ideal for you as primary, might be a useful adjunct for special purposes for your holster wardrobe. And for some of you, it actually might be the best default. Basically what you have, among the advantages of the shoulder rig, when you are seated, it's real easy to reach across the chest and under the garment, as opposed to getting to, to behind the belt, the elbow splayed out now in a less than optimum chicken wing, draw, and finally access the thread. I've found over the years with very heavy uh, winter garments in a, a cold weather climate, if you've got, a, let's say, a sport coat on and an overcoat on on top of that, by simply leaving the buttons up here undone, and the weight of the fabric generally holds it closed against the wind anyway, make a knife hand like this, slice right in, and I won't draw a loaded gun on you, but you're, you're right onto the gun. Uh, we found female shooters, and particularly females who carry, a huge impediment for them is female wardrobes are not particularly compatible with handguns, particularly larger handguns. A whole lot of executive dress environments don't allow for a dress gun belt like this one from Precision Holster. The self-suspensory nature of the shoulder holster, so long as they're wearing some sort of a upper cover garment, solves that problem quite nicely. Another thing we noticed with female users, a whole lot of guys, especially big guys or guys who work out and have big biceps and big pectorals, have limited range of movement across the chest and find it awkward to access the shoulder holster. You'll find almost any woman you know will have proportionally narrower torso and more limber arms than a brother her same height. And we found just in classroom demonstrations, the male might only be able to reach this far. You'll find a female the same height can generally get this hand around over to here and it's actually proportionally more accessible for female than male. In my case, the reason I've uh, dug this Bianchi X15 shoulder holster out of a pile of old holsters that's probably older than some of you watching this, I think I had this one back in the 70s, is about a year ago I got diagnosed with a couple of degenerating discs in the lumbar, which in turn uh, triggered some sciatica, that's where the sciatic nerve emanates, and for me, for a long time, it was focusing on the hip side. Carrying over here allowed me to get that weight off the hip, and it was, for me, literally orthopedic. And it still serves that purpose for me fairly nicely. Other advantages, you'll find that for a weak hand draw, being on the non-dominant hand side of the body, the shoulder holster is pretty quick to get to. I'm not gonna draw a loaded gun on you here, but can snap out with alacrity. For a gun and spare ammunition, perhaps even other accessories like a small flashlight, the shoulder system that was pioneered by uh, Gallagher uh, when he created the what's now the Galco holster line, with the holster on one side and the spare mag pouch or speed loaders or other accessories like handcuffs here, that shoulder system, if there was an emergency that required you to be armed and you weren't comfortable being constantly armed, allowed you to just throw it on like you were putting on a jacket and very quickly suit up and get moving. So there are advantages to the shoulder holsters and they come basically in four styles or four angles of carry. Vertical that you see here, horizontal, semi-shoulder, and upside down. We'll deal with those one at a time and show you the pros and cons of each type of carry. 
The first uh, style we'll start with is the old, some call it the old Elliott Ness holster. Uh, I call it simply vertical, some call it muzzle down orientation. It tends to work particularly well with the, the full size service pistol. The reason being the long barrel is parallel to the longest part of the body. If I was carrying horizontal, a guy my size, the muzzle is going to be protruding here and bulging distinctly underneath the cover garment. Seen here safely with this uh, Black Hawk dummy gun. Now, what I found with these is they're very accessible to the non-dominant hand in an emergency if this hand is taken out. And heavy winter clothing where you've got multiple layers, knifing the hand through here will get you to the gun pretty quickly. Because it's tied down at the waist, and with a vertical shoulder holster, you definitely want to tie down. You don't have a lot of, if you lean over, the gun swaying out and becoming visible. If you bend forward, the gun bends with you. It doesn't swing out ahead and become visible to someone over here at the other restaurant table, and they panic while you're just picking up a dropped fork or something. For a draw with any shoulder holster, they're, they're banned because of the cross draw principle. That is, body crossing draw like this can sweep the range officer behind you, sweep the shooter on your left before it finally gets to the target. Should be safely done if I had a shoulder holster user as I occasionally get on my range. The right handed one would go on the far left of the range, the left handed one on the far right. I would teach them to draw with their elbow raised so the arm is not crossed, either a straight up block like this, or some prefer the Kerry Najolia block, where the arm goes up like this. Either way, you're getting that brachial artery out of the path of the gun. Now, without sweeping anyone on the side, a straight up draw across the chest takes me right into the threat, and this hand, of course, will have plenty of time to catch up. You'll see a lot of the manuals and some of the videos a draw that I consider suboptimal. You'll see the holster, this type of holster is spring-loaded, the Bianchi X15, and breaks down the front portion. They'll teach a draw of ripping down, coming out belly high, and that would work with the ancient FBI crouch. But I find it slow, awkward, and doesn't get the gun where it needs to go as fast as I'd like. I come across, Bring straight across the chest where it's already now in lower periphery of vision and I can index the shot and then run straight into the threat. In close, in a retention situation, you can fire from here. But anywhere through here, and now you can see why I demonstrate with the dummy gun, you're going to get on target. Next up is the horizontal shoulder holster, uh, so-called for obvious reasons. It's adjusted so the barrel is of the gun is pretty much parallel to the ground. This will work better with the smaller guns, unless you've got a really deep uh, torso front to back. The uh, great holster authority Chick Gaylord, in his 1960 book, Handgunner's Guide, said he considered this the fastest of all shoulder holsters, and I'm not going to go back in time to argue with him. This holster here is a Galco, and as you see, you can order them with one on either side. Now, maybe that's ostentatious. Among other things, if they're identical guns, it gives you a perfect balance and it doesn't pull the body one way or the other. And you always know where your backup is. Uh, normally, you'd be carrying spare magazine pouches here to balance the weight. Again, as you do the draw, you want to, as much as possible, angle the torso toward the threat. Now, th with this holster, you would have a problem. You'd definitely be crossing someone else on the firing line. So I would not want to have anyone on, the fire, on this side of the, of the firing line. You want this elbow to get up and clear. When the strap is popped, it's simply right straight across the chest, and that shorter distance is what Chad Gaylord was talking about. Notice that here, I've got the forward arm bent. You'll find with the body edged, you're going into the classic weaver stance, the strong side leg to the rear, the torso very much bladed, and it flows very naturally into the original classic weaver with both elbows bent, gun hand pushing, support hand pulling, or the Chapman modification of the weaver with the gun arm locked straight out, the bent arm pulling tight in using dynamic instead of isometric tension. With the body bladed like this to get the gun out across without crossing people on your left, to go to an isosceles would require an additional turn of the torso that could take you a little bit more time.
Next, as we progress, semi upside down, meaning the muzzle at probably a 45 degree angle. This is probably the most popular the, that I see today uh, advertised around the gun shops. Works for me better with a smaller gun than it does with the larger, heavier gun. The heavier they are, the more they want to sway out from the body. Remember I mentioned the possibility of bending over to reach for a fork. See how the gun kind of hangs out there? You get a full-size service pistol, it's going to be hanging further out. And we've seen cases of people being made as gun carriers when they didn't want to be because of that factor. Another problem you have with them is they're, they're not held tight against the armpit and they're not stabilized against the belt for the most part. So what you get if you're running, it's literally, particularly with a heavy service gun, it's whacking you in the floating ribs every step. If I was going to carry one of these regularly, I'd want one that did have an elastic belt attachment that held it here snug. It would prevent that bouncing effect, it would prevent that swinging out effect, and basically it would keep the gun more stable. Now, one thing you're finding as the muzzle goes up and the butt comes down, the front strap of the grip of the handgun, revolver or auto, gets progressively farther away from the reaching gun hand. Here, I can barely get a good grip on the gun, but I have to sort of twist my wrist to do it. There's a whole lot of guys out there bigger than me. I've seen guys with such broad chests and big arms, they literally could not reach the gun in this, in this position. And that's something you want to find out, obviously, before you start carrying it there. For a lot of folks, the most expeditious draw is the middle finger catches that and flips the whole gun upward into the drawing hand. And at that point, we come across the chest and out and up into the threat. This holster is an old Bianchi 209. The dummy gun is a uh, replica of a Smith & Wesson J frame from Odin Press. Finally, we have the true upside down holster, a design that goes back to the 1930s probably with the Burns Martin design. The Burns Martin held a revolver in this position with uh, spring clamps. Uh, it looked sort of like a clamshell, and some people mistakenly called it the clamshell, even though that's actually the name of a different type of holster. This is the Ken Null SMZ. Uh, the angle is the same, the breakout is different. It's secured with a pull-through snap uh, in the front of the trigger guard. Because there is proximity there to the trigger, the company recommends it be used only with fully loaded double action weapons and with a single action auto or a striker fired auto that the chamber be emptied if, if carried in this fashion. It rides very close, very tight, tight enough that you can see this holster is made of white plastic. That's so it won't show through dress shirts. A lot of Mr. Null's customers apparently wear this under a dress shirt. They leave this button undone so they can just reach in and grasp at this level and strip the gun out. And the necktie covers the, uh, the unfilled buttonhole. They are comfortable, they're slow, particularly with this design to reholster. But for many people uh, with a two inch type revolver with a small frame, uh, they find it particularly concealable and suitable for their needs. To make that uh, trigger snap work, I catch with the middle finger, take a full grasp approximately here, snap outward, and come up like that. Not designed to win a quick draw contest, but for a shoulder holster you can actually hide under a dress shirt with your coat off. You can see why the product has a place. Another advantage with a shoulder holster is it can lend itself to a surreptitious draw. You're in a situation that you think is getting kind of sticky, you'd really like to have a gun in your hand, but you're not sure it's time to draw yet, and you don't want to cause a stampede doing it in a public place. This hand sneaks into drawing position, seen here safely on the dummy gun. This hand, to the casual eye, you simply appear to be standing with your arms folded. And from behind, of course, uh, you're just the guy with the arms folded. But if you need that gun, it's out pretty quick. How quick? I think we can show you. We've just done a quick demo with a Coach's Eye app. We're using an SF uh, safety training pistol that emits only a laser and a replicated gunshot. Seen from the opponent's eye view, the movement will begin and the gun will become visible very quickly and the shot will be fired. It's 43 one hundredths of a second total 
from when the, the elbow is the first movement that's visible to the opponent to when the shot is fired. From when the gun itself appears at a point here to when the shot is fired is 27 one hundredths of a second. And that's a whole lot quicker than you're going to be able to clear a coat and draw from a hip holster. So everything has its advantages, everything has its weaknesses. Uh, the shoulder holster restricts you to constantly wearing uh, the upper garment. You can't shrug it off and leave it down around your waist on a hot day in the restaurant like you could with a hip holster. Some people find it uncomfortable, but heck, some people find it uncomfortable the first time they carry a gun anywhere. If you're going to try one, give it time. Get a design that's going to work best for you and for your clothing. You will definitely want the, uh, the outer garments to be one size large to conceal the gun this high up on the torso. Consider it as an option for your bag of tricks. Good luck, stay safe, and don't forget, subscribe to the YouTube channel.